Hey friends, we are in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And in the last chapter, in chapter 2, we talked about the difference between being spiritually mature and understanding um, the Spirit of God within us and working in the Spirit of God and the, the struggle of having the Spirit of the world within us. And so Paul's going to dive into that a little deeper in chapter 3. Brothers and sisters, verse 1. I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are still worldly, mere infants in Christ. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not yet ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. You are still worldly, for since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere humans? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not mere human, are we not mere human beings? What, after all, is Apollos, and what is Paul? Only servants, through whom you came to believe, as the Lord has assigned to each his task. I planted the seed, Apollos watered, but it was God has been making it grow. Friends, this is so important that as humans, we stake our hat not on what one preacher teaches or one doctrine of theology says, but on God, that we understand that all of it happens by his grace, that we are all just parts of the story, that we don't take credit for the work that the Holy Spirit is doing. Verse seven, so neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. Anything that's done in ministry, anything done in the local church or in the global church is possible because of the grace of God. It's not us and our power as humans to make things happen. Verse eight, the one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose and they will each be rewarded according to their own labor. For we are co-labors in God's service. You are the God's field, God's building. Friends, this is what unity is for one person to do one part in ministry and another person to do another part. And then for God to use all those parts together to make it grow. We don't have to be used. God could do this all on his own. We get to be used. And that opportunity is something we need not take for granted. Verse 10, by the grace, there it is again, by the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder and someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care. Every assignment that God gives us, we need to do carefully. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid. So the foundation of all things is what comes next. Catch this, verse 11. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. If it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved, even though only as one escaping through the flames. Okay, so let's stop for a second. Paul's not talking about a salvation issue here. When he talks about fire, and we know fire to be representative of judgment, God is judging the work that we do as Christians. And Paul is talking specifically to believers in Corinth, and he's telling them, you're not super mature. I would love to say that you're mature in your faith and you're living by the spirit, but you're not doing that. I want to give you meat, but you're getting milk because you're still baby Christians. He's saying all this quarreling, all this fighting, all this animosity and division in the church, shows that you're not mature in your faith. Because if you were mature, you would understand we all play a part in the story and we get the opportunity to be God's servants. We don't have to be. God doesn't need us. God uses us out of his grace. And so all the work that we do must be laid on the foundation of Jesus Christ. Therefore, when our time before God comes and we give an account of everything that we've done, we give back to the master this stewardship account, it will go through the fire. And anything that was for selfish ambition or to build up our own names instead of the name of Jesus, all of that gets burned away. It doesn't mean we won't go to heaven. It just means we won't have rewards the way we would have if we had been building with quality materials. And so Paul's giving them that understanding. Verse 16, 
Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person for God's temple is sacred and you together are that temple. So this is individually and collectively as the church body, God dwells within us as the Holy Spirit indwells the believer. Verse 18, do not deceive yourselves. If any of you think you are wise by the standards of this age, you should become fools so that you may become wise. For the wisdom of the world is foolishness in God's sight. As it is written, he catches the wise in their craftiness. And again, the Lord knows that the thoughts of the wise are futile. So then no more boasting about human leaders. All things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas, for the world of the world or life or death or the present or the future, all are yours. And you are of Christ and Christ is of God. At the end of this, all of it is God's. All of the teachers, all of the leaders, all of the churches, all of the ministry, all of creation, it's God's. It's not ours. We simply have the opportunity to steward things for a short period of time. Chasing after one teacher, following only one preacher, staking our entire doctrine or theology on what one person says instead of coming to God, studying the scriptures for ourselves, wrestling this out with the spirit, it doesn't matter. We need to be focused on the gospel and that is Jesus Christ crucified for our sin and his resurrection. And that's what Paul's getting at. This, this division in the local church is not helpful and it needs to end. So that, my friends, is 1 Corinthians chapter 3.